All right, well, my last conversation with Yoni Mazur was so good, so successful. The CEO of Gatita, I wanted to bring him back because Yoni, you know, this week a lot of people were focused on elections, but now we can focus on the holidays and, dare I say, consumer spending? Yes, sir, consumer spending. I mean, it's still a holiday. People will still have to... Uh... You know, gift each other, right, and gift the family and uh, make them kids happy and um, finish off the year with a good, strong note, uh, at least on a human-friendly social level or spiritual level. So they're going to be spending, I guess. Yeah, they're going to have to. So, and by the way, does Gatita do anything for veterans as well? I mean, I know that Amazon and you are, are, are partners here. So does Amazon, does Gatita work with veterans as well? It is Veterans Day today. Oh, uh, yeah. So, uh, first of all, happy Veterans Day for everybody and much respect to anybody who served. Um, so, we do work with veterans. We don't have a special program, but of course, if you're a veteran, veteran and um, uh, you need uh, further assistance or support or help in any way, feel free to reach out. We'll try to carve out uh, you know, anything that we can to uh, make it more affordable or, or, or give you more input or insight how to be more successful. We're we'll definitely open to that as well. Well, you know, veterans have some excitement to start life back in the in the states some veterans have a lot of tough time so what about the amazon influencer program let's start there D- em- empowers veterans to be their own person when they come back yeah so the amazon influencer program they call it aip um it's an opportunity for anybody that has um uh, social media followings especially on youtube and facebook uh, it doesn't have to be a large one but it has to be an effective one meaning whatever you say out there your followers are actually kind of listening, and they take action based on what you tell them, right? They're really so it's a strong leadership. Uh, so it could be that you have a few hundred followers, a few thousand, tens of thousands, or millions. It's fine. Uh, at any point of those skills, if they're committed and they kind of follow what you do and they take action, that is the kind of environment that Amazon is looking for for their AIP program. So you should be able to apply there, and they're going to look at all your stats and everything um, and see if you're eligible. And if you are, they're going to approve you. And if you're not, if, uh, you're not eligible yet, uh, well, what I recommend is you give them six months or maybe a year. Try to kind of uh, pick up your numbers and your, your game in terms of social media influencing. And then reapply. And then you might get in on the second or third round. But uh, what's nice about it is that if you're able to get in, is that um, Amazon, uh, you see, because it's so um, selective, uh, if you're able to get in, it's very lucrative. You can generate 10% from the revenue or sales that are generated uh, with this traffic um, so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to send your traffic uh, the people that you influence either from Facebook or YouTube into this Amazon storefront that you're going to get it's going to be a special storefront you're going to get within the storefront you're going to be able to include products that you believe in and you think your followers should try or use and if they go into your storefront and they add to cart and they buy those products that's when you can get 10% revenue share so for example if you recommend a really good shaving machine, right? Soldiers and veterans, they, they know exactly what it all means when you have to shave. You have to shave daily, and you recommend a, a really good shaving machine or a shaving blade. You're able to uh, kind of highlight the the, the impact and uh, the quality of, of a product, certain product, and drive that traffic. Say, hey, if you want to try it out or even get a little uh, promo or a discount, uh, you know, visit my storefront on Amazon. Uh, they, they're going to go visit there. They're going to find that shaver. They're going to, you know, buy it. And then let's say you generated $10 million worth of sales through this kind of, uh, you know, promotion and influencing, 10% goes to you. That's a million dollars. That is money. That's real money. Uh, if you generate uh, $100 million, 10%, once again, $10 million. So definitely an opportunity for uh, veterans out there and people who have the power to influence um, to generate revenue within the largest online marketplace in the world called, called Amazon.com. Uh, it's a selective program. It's not... Uh, like the affiliate program. Amazon has an affiliate program, also known as the associates program, where it's very large in scope and everybody kind of join, but they pay much less. They'll pay one, two, maybe 3% from the revenue you generate. It's much more generalistic, but uh, the Amazon uh, in- influencer program, AIP, it's much more selective, more exclusive, more lucrative, uh, and, and it's available. So uh, it's very uh, it's very important that you know, uh, you're educated about it. And of course, if you have a good presence, you're a veteran and you got the hang of the social media game. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to really make a, a decent living uh, and, and, and get some value from the network and the influence that you are in positive influence that you generate there on, you know, on, on, on culture. 
All right. Well, I'm glad you said that. Now, put on your Gatita CEO hat. Put on, you know, your your entrepreneurial hat. Personally speaking, and those that are veterans that may not be confident in starting their own business or launching themselves after they return because maybe they don't feel like there's hope here when they come back or maybe even open arms. What do you say to them? Oh, definitely hope. A lot of hope. So this is an amazing time in our world where if you have a smartphone, it's in the palm of your hands. The power is in the palm of your hands. So the same way you had the power to go to different countries and serve a country and do complex operations, uh, whatever it was, it could be you know, uh, uh, you know, heavy machinery or, or weapons or intelligence, whatever it was, right? You're able to do it for your country. Uh, do something for yourself. So hold the phone, which you have in your hands, it's a smartphone, you know, and put it on video mode and uh, film yourself. And you just, you know, pour your heart out. Say, hey, this is my experience. This is who I am. Uh, this is what I believe in. You know, this is what I recommend, things of that nature. And just post it. You can post it on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. You'll start small, uh, and then you can start following within those uh, ecosystems and these platforms. You can start following uh, the ones that you influence you, and you kind of relate to their message. And as you start inf- uh, following them, they kind of recognize you. They might start following you, and it creates an, e- an eco chamber for each platform where you're getting noticed and you're being a part of. So, uh, yeah, it's a social digital environment that uh, you'll be able to find people who are like-minded or even the ones that are not like-minded, but you can have open discussions and kind of influence each other and cross-pollinate ideas and thoughts. So it's a whole universe. It's a whole environment. It's, um, it's open to everybody. Um, it's, it's really no cost. You just, you know, use your hands, use your smartphone, uh, stay authentic, stay honest, and, you know, join the discussions. And um, I'm pretty confident that many will start following you over time. Uh, look at it as a long-term journey. You, you know, a few months, a few years, you'll be able to get a decent size of following. And you will be following others, which is fine. You're part of that community. And, of course, uh, there's ways to monetize on that later on. Um, so it's definitely achievable. It's there. A little bit of patience, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, discipline. And definitely veterans have discipline. Uh, you should be able to achieve great results. Love it. Hey, I'm talking about Gatita CEO, uh, Yoni Mazer. Now, Yoni, you know, since we last talked, has inflation gone down? Is it now a point below the when we last talked to seven point seven? Is that a good sign? Yes, 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 yes. Let's see what happens. We talk a little bit and things get a little bit better. So last time we spoke, inflation was above eight percent, but now it's uh, it's kind of uh, drifting down towards seven point seven percent. So that has very positive impact and influence on financial markets. The Nasdaq went up in a single day more than seven percent, seven points. That was the best day of the Nasdaq since twenty twenty. In a single uh, day increase. So, uh, yeah, there are deflationary forces that are happening, uh, so are, which are impacting uh, the economy now. So, hopefully, this uh, positive momentum will continue going because uh, the, the Federal Reserve, uh, their ambition is to keep you know, inflation at no, no more, you know, not, not, not a single digit above 3%. So, there's still a lot of work to do because we're at 7.7, but the fact that the trend is going down and, 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 and there are deflationary forces that are happening and helping lower it. It's a good indicator, but we're not out of the turbulence. You know, we're still in the turbulence. It's not as rocky. It's a bit less, but it's still rocky. So just a little perspective on that. Well, you know, the messaging from the White House is there's no nothing wrong. We're, 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 we're going on it. But I'm glad you are giving caution to people. But is the messaging so key to get people spending again or what? Yes, it's a very unusual um, uh, position that we're in, where it's really it's pretty critical actually of uh, what people are going to be spending like this uh, holiday Christmas season. Uh, hopefully, the more you spend, the better it will be for the economy in a very strange way because 70% of the, the U.S. economy is based on consumerism and you know uh, you know people shopping for stuff. So what's happening is that behind the scenes is that or in front of the scene is that a lot of the companies and the big brands they have excess inventory. Let's say Nike, for example, it's sitting on a lot, a lot of inventory. You know, for for the past year and a half, uh, there was a big struggle on the global supply chain to get enough inventory to meet the demand. So there was a whole struggle, struggle, struggle. There was more demand than supply, right? So the inventory is always short. So these brands, you know, Nike is an example. They made bigger, bigger bets. They started, you know, ordering more, 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 just to make sure that by the time they get their products, because it, uh, uh, you know, it was limited in supply, and also if it wasn't, it took a long time to get there because of the global supply chain snarls and, and, and uh, complications. So all of a sudden they got this mountain of inventory, but at the same time they finally got this inventory. 
the demand has slowed down. So they're sitting on, a, you know, excess inventory or they have an inventory glut. So this Christmas season, it's an opportunity for, for, for these brands, the, you know, these retailers and manufacturers to uh, get rid of uh, uh, that excess inventory, offer great deals, bargain deals, hopefully. Even if they lose money, it's selling that. At least they'll able to, they'll be, uh, they're going to be able to convert their uh, inventory into cash and hopefully reset the economy. Right, the, you know, this well, end of the year look, reset. The economy, you're right so now. It, speaking of reset, well, uh, I feel like Cyber Monday and Black Friday are being advertised all month now. Am I am I seeing things, or are they messaging that as well? Like, hey, it's Black Friday every day because of your cell phone now. Uh, it is uh, because of the ease of social media. I mean, Black Friday uh, was born from traditional brick and mortar. Uh, they call it Black Friday because. Uh, most of the year, uh, these retailers were uh, in the negative. They were losing money, right? That's what's red. But also, when you make profit on the books, instead of having a red ink, you have black ink. So it's Black Friday. All of a sudden, it turns into black. And then they have a good 30-day run with the Christmas season, and they uh, uh, finish off the year with great profit. And it kind of resets the whole year for these retailers. So in the same vein, it's kind of a, it's the whole situation is for the brands and the manufacturers with brick and mortar, but also with digital, meaning e-commerce. They're all in the boat together. They're all sitting on excess inventory, and they need the consumers to um, hopefully um, jump in on, on the opportunity to really uh, get real uh, discounts and bargains on this excess inventory so they can buy a lot of it or hopefully most of it so that, uh, these retailers and manufacturers are able to you know, get flush with cash and get rid of that excess inventory. And now that they sit on cash, make wiser decisions, uh, they're hopefully going to be able to keep their employees, not fire them, not kind of, you know, uh, go into a recession mode or, uh, uh, you know, reduction mode. Uh, so it's pretty critical. You see it already happening in technology. A lot of the tech firms, you see that they're, they're firing and letting go of people. We have Meta. We had um, uh, who else is out there reducing their size? I think even uh, Twitter. You know, has Twitter happened. has been the other one that's reducing a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Netflix, and the fact so that they want to declare bankruptcy, board. weigh in on that for a second. Isn't that wild, or is that just Elon being Elon? I don't know. This is uh, this is this, this universe. Elon universe is uh, you know, he's, he's he's so out of this world that he he has a physical ability to go out of this world. So it's it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, I can't speak for him, but it's it's just definitely dramatic and interesting. So, uh, you know, to be to be uh, continued, as they say. Uh, but well, I would I love it if speaking of being continued is if we talk next time and I said, well, inflation is down to six percent. Maybe our podcast is doing a movement here. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I do hope that because the, the, the retailers are sitting on inventory glut, they're going to really get aggressive on the discounts and that will deflate prices, which will help deflation or, or, or combat inflation. So next time we speak, you know, hopefully uh, next month or so. Uh, it will go lower than, you know, the 7.7 will be 7.2 or under 7. It will be very nice. Hopefully the, the positive trend uh, will continue. It will be interesting to see. Um, but, yeah, def definitely interesting uh, times, and uh, different. Uh, it's going to be a different environment for, for shopping. It's really whatever you spend uh, will really contribute to the economy and hopefully uh, keep it at good health uh, because you see, we see on the digital front all the layoffs. But on the on the the retail side of things, which is really the seventy percent of the economy, it's still not there yet. Everybody's kind of on the fence to see how consumers like you and me uh, behave and sh and how much we're gonna shop. So we're all in this together. So it's very interesting times. Well, I want to ask you this. You know, I had booked you for after election to get people, you know, moving forward and onward. Yet we don't have a resolved House or Senate. So. Do you see the market really reacting here in the next few days as the votes finally get counted and we figure out who has what? I think so. I think so. it adds to the volatility. The whole year was very volatile and turbulent, uh, and, and the lack of decisiveness either way is uh, adding to the volatility. So, yeah, uh, it's definitely another layer of complexity. By the next time I have you, we'll figure out who has the House and Senate. How about that? Uh, you know, you want to make a bet? Yeah, why not? Uh, well, what, what's the score now? I think it's, uh, what was it, 49-48 or something like that? Right, and then the House is like seven, six, seven seats away, so. I don't know. I mean, this year, your call. I think you've been more diverse with politics than myself, so. What well, I just, I just yeah. feel like it's going to be, well, we're hopefully by the weekend's end, we'll, we'll get there. But my main question to you is because you follow the markets, um, are they waiting for that? I mean, it didn't have much movement today. It seems like that's the next turning point, isn't it? 
Um, yes, you know, it's uh, still a midterm election. It, it, it really dictates uh, the House, but not the whole gambit. I mean, you know, the president, that's a bit more dramatic and influential uh, because even if you have your lame president or lame dark president where you don't have the House and everything, uh, you still be able to, to pass some laws if they make uh, kind of common sense across the board. So that's okay. But, you know, the, the leadership on top or the president, that I think, takes more of a dramatic role because the whole administration really kind of resets. Um, so that typically, you know, affects more the market. So it is affecting not as dramatic as the, the top brass. Uh, that's just the, the way it is. All right. Well, one last thing before I let you go is how can people get in touch with you? We've had a, a jam-packed 20 minutes here. So how can people, how can people get in touch with you and, and Gatita? You guys, so I'm pretty uh, active on social media. You can follow me at LinkedIn or, um, Facebook, uh, just you know, just uh, put my name over there. You'll be able to uh, find me right away. It's Yoni Mazor, which is Y O N I M A Z O R. Um, or if you want, you can just email me directly. It's Yoni Y O N I M for Mama at Gatita dot com, which is G E T I D A dot com. So Yoni M at Gatita dot com. All right, I can't let you go without asking one more question. Since we last talked, the Fed did raise interest rates. Is, is that something to keep an eye on as we hit the consumer, you know, spending season? A hundred percent. Yeah. Every time they, they, they increase the, the interest rates, that means uh, money costs more money. Uh, so if you're taking a, you know, a loan or a mortgage, you're just going to pay more, uh, which is very, it's pretty frustrating, uh, especially coming out from, uh, you know, about 50 years of low interest rate environment where money was kind of almost free. Uh, so that fueled the economy and, and, you know, people were able to, uh, uh, you know, take risk and open businesses because they feel they can afford the payments, the you know, the, the loan payments. So it definitely has big, big weight and impact at this point. So uh, once again, uh, another thing to look forward to. Hopefully it will go the right direction, which is lower. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll have you back as well as we hit uh, December. I'd love to get a monthly report for you. You got it. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. You know, I hope everybody else is you know, feeling good and, uh, you know, uh, much success. And actually, happy Thanksgiving, because we'll talk to you right after that into December. So we'll talk then. Happy Thanksgiving. You betcha. I'm Alex Garrett. One leg up once again with Yoni Mazur on this economy, what to do. And uh, I, I really value uh, Yoni's uh, opinions here. So I'm glad he joined us for a second time. Let's carry that into December. And uh, I'm Alex Garrett. Talk to you soon. 